Hello and welcome back to another Xenonauts 2 guide. My name is Saiken and today we are going to take a look into the ultimate guide to aerial combat. This is a small guide where I'm trying to go through a concise and informative summary of what is needed in order to be successful in aerial combat for Xenonauts 2. So let's jump right into it. Jumping into the guide for aerial combat, which is potentially one of the shorter guides, but since it took me a while to figure out how it works, I will just save you the time and get right to it. So aerial combat is an interesting one because you need to win aerial combat in order to shoot down UFOs, in order to reduce panic and in order to start um, getting to the actual UFO crash site. So it's not optional. And currently the game doesn't have an auto resolve option, which means you actually need to fight it. Let's talk about the beginning and then the later stages of aerial combat and what to do and what not to do. It, it starts with the setup of your actual um, interceptors. So the only interceptor that you will ever have are the angel interceptors at the beginning. Later you get the phantoms, which are the upgraded version. A couple of things to know. Number one, uh, these here have a limited fuel reserve. So if you uh, do have a base in North America, for instance, they can reach Latin America, North America, and that's about it. No way for them to get to Europe and back. Number two, most of the UFOs are a little bit faster, so you will actually have a harder time uh, keeping up with them. So just keep that in, in mind in order to manage expectations. There are three weapons at the beginning, which is basically a cannon, a uh, light missile and a heavy missile and the same will go on throughout the entire game. The normal uh, jets only have one hard point for cannons and basically two hard points for missiles and that's about it which means cannon are inherently a little bit more valuable. Cannons deal a lot of damage and as you can see they also have a destruction value so the normal cannon fires four, four times per second and takes out um, two armor over each second dealing 20 points of damage so five points of damage per shot which means highly armored targets will take a while until you can actually soften them up on the other hand um, the missiles deal a lot of damage at the beginning very moderate destruction value but have a far far higher range range 20 is ultra high versus range here is almost none three uh, which requires really dogfight and near combat. So what is the loadout that I would recommend? There is a third weapon which is called the Skylands Torpedo or the Torpedoes. The Torpedoes can be evaded by smaller um, UFOs but they destroy a lot of armor as you can see. Minus 10 armor. Moderate damage but a lot of armor destruction. So what I would suggest is you're going in with two normal missiles on one and a, uh, and a heavy torpedo and a normal missile on the second one. That will generate enough armor destruction if needed. And uh, for the bigger, for the medium U UFOs, and for the smaller UFOs, you still have three out of four missiles that can hit them. The other one is going to be the auto cannon, so that's pretty damn straightforward. Now, moving on to the actual aerial combat. The moment that you intercept a UFO, you will have the option to either tail it until it's over land, very helpful option to then shoot it down. Once it's over land, you can commence an attack. And here is mainly where I messed up because I haven't really read the manual, uh, so to speak. And the actual, uh, the actual aerial combat is a bit more complicated or a bit more rich than what you would uh, be used to. Number one, every single UFO has a certain like parameter of where it can fire. This time we do have a scout, has a, an almost 180 degrees parameter to fire and has a certain range. You can already see the range is larger than the one of our miniguns, which is shown here. So this is three, they have six, seven, maybe eight uh, range. Now, this is where the more important um, point comes in. Uh, since it has a forward looking angle we might want to make sure that we're attacking from two different sides or alternatively since both of the fighters are healthy we want to attack from the front now there are a couple of special maneuvers that you need to know before we're uh, actually starting this is mainly what i have overlooked for starters you do have your missiles you can see the missiles do have a long long range so we can easily hit them uh, the three Sidewinders will hit, the Scout will potentially move away from the Skylands Torpedo, 
Uh, so we will deal a sizable amount of damage but not kill it right away. What is uh, helpful though is that there are a couple of options. Let's start with the most important one, Retreat Aircraft. Retreat Aircraft has around uh, three-ish seconds but that is a long time before it works. Uh, the carrier can still fight but say if you see that you're taking 15-20% uh, per second as damage because you're being hit oftentimes then the natural port, uh, the natural reaction is the moment that you have taken 30% damage you want to retreat. However, that being said, even if you quote unquote lose one of these aircrafts, it will just take nine days to rebuild it and will come at no additional cost. So losing one isn't the end of uh, the world. However, retreating at the right time is a good idea. Now, the other maneuvers that you do have is evasive roll left and right, which is E and Q. Those are ultra important and I didn't know how important they were before starting the game because you can evade most of the torpedoes of the enemy. And then um, they will have a cooldown for, I think, two seconds before you can use it once again. So you cannot continuously evade, but it will reduce the damage input that you take massively. So use them. Then the, the other one is the afterburner. Afterburner means you get, will fly faster, but you cannot shoot during that time and you cannot do your evasive rolls. However, it is useful in order to close the distance. So what I will do is I will let them shoot first all of their missiles shortly uh, going in and you can see all of them are now fired then we will select both of them press f for the afterburner and start moving in as they are moving as fast as possible you can see enemy is uh, starting to take damage and that is the first big hit that we will take leave afterburner and take an evasive maneuver there you go no damage taken we have now switched over uh, the um, uh, the shots to angel 2 angel 2 afterburner gone take an evasive maneuver there you go no damage angel 1 would take a hit evasive maneuver too late but if i would have been a bit faster it would have been all okay we're going to take another evasive maneuver here a little bit too late and we're going to take another evasive maneuver here just to get out of uh, the influence zone another evasive maneuver and there we go so that was not too bad uh, we've only taken 30 health damage if you were just to fly straight in you would potentially take almost all of the uh, almost all of the health as damage from uh, the uh, from the enemy UFO so that is how you should go through most of the aerial combat Make sure that you juggle aggro a little bit and make sure that you're using the defensive roles as much as possible. If we would have taken more damage, I would have started to um, to retreat. Uh, just go back to the base, fill up your torpedoes, come back and continue bombarding it. But that should get you through most of uh, the game. I will shortly also review the upgraded Phantom in the rest of the guide. But these base uh, information should give, uh, get you at least until months number three, four, when the larger U4 start to hit. All right, finishing up the guide around the aerial combat, we still wanted to look into the end game where the phantoms are the name of the game. Phantoms typically will be faster. They have a higher turn rate. They can follow every single UFO and they do have enough fuel to basically fly around the main planet. So what I tend to do towards the end game is have, have the main base with three, four hangars overall, but three dedicated hangars for the Phantoms. Three is the maximum capacity that you could have in terms of uh, air fight at the same time. So it's maximum three versus three. And the Phantoms are really good at what they're supposed to do. They come with a slight different loadout. They have two cannon hardpoints, which can be used for uh, torpedoes but 
um, and, and missiles, but they can also be used for normal cannons. And really what I do with them is I do have two with the highest uh, weapon in the case of an endgame that would be a gauze blaster, but could be a laser blaster uh, earlier in the game. And then finally, we got one uh, mm, a torpedo. At the end game, it is a fusion torpedo. In the uh, earlier parts of the game, it is the normal torpedo. It does the exact same thing. It uh, reduces armor. And the idea there is one quake reduction of armor on heavy targets. And other than that, just fly in and nail the enemies down. With upgraded armor, good defensive roll maneuvers and focus fire with uh, the gauze cannons and nothing can stand in your way it just decimates whatever you do have for the normal uh, fighters they are not completely out of uh, the game i would even argue that you could have a um, a squadron of uh, them in in the other regions like i'm currently having it and really i'm using the same layout uh, a heavy torpedo a lighter weapon and then the hardest uh, blaster that is available so that's just the upgraded version of the loadout beforehand they still can punch uh, way above their normal weight class but it is noticeable that with the uh, de decrease in armor and low hit points they are also quite fragile so be aware of that and that really concludes aerial combat i hope it uh, will help you quite a bit Area combat is the key to victory as you need to have air superiority in order to even get a chance of shooting down UFOs and then looting them. So that should um, arm you with everything you need. If you want more guides, check the playlist. I do have plenty of guides around Xenonauts 2 and enjoy your rights, commanders. Take care and good luck. Bye bye.